Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic. Thank you for being here. Today is potentially going to be one of my favorite episodes. It's happening. Spirit fingers are out already. Today, we're going to talk about being a creativity gangsta. It's a creativity gangsta kind of day. And we have a very special guest, Jessica Hagee. She's joining us and she'll be with us here in just a second. Let's get started. As you know, at the Strategic Hot Box, we learn, we love, and we kick ass. That's the way that it rolls. And today, in talking about creativity, I just, I love this topic. I love being creative. I love watching my beefcakes, my babies be creative. And it's amazing how when little kids, they just unleash that creativity. There's no uh, regrets. There's no uh, kind of internal dialogue that they have about keeping them from being that way. And creativity is crucial. Creativity is crucial in, in leadership, is crucial in business. Creativity is so important at home. It's important in bed. And it just is important everywhere. And so creativity has really ushered in this age of, of, disruption, of, of disruption and in and innovation. Organizations need to have more creativity. It's about thinking differently and it's about being different and, and embracing that. As a matter of fact, I was even thinking in preparation for this about that Apple Think Different campaign. And it's been years ago now, 15, 20 years ago, but that campaign. But the quote was, the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that actually do. And I love that. It's about I just letting go and being being open and willing to just be creative and at some point i feel like in the growth process some point as we become adults it just becomes stressful to to be creative that if i ask somebody to do something creative draw color you know do something different then people are so stressed like i'm not this person and why not why not just let go you don't have to be the best we're not asking you to become the next picasso we're asking you to just let go a little bit and unleash a little bit of your inner self and i look at creativity a as no bullshit. And what I mean by that is creativity almost is accountability. It's about not being lazy. It's about, it's, it's like an approach to, to problem solving. And what I mean by that example of that is, have you ever been in a service situation and the person that's there, the service representative won't help you solve the problem that they're like, Oh, nope, sorry. Nope, nope. We can't help you. Sorry. And it's happened for me with flights. Like for example, we've canceled your flight. Like, okay, well, I still need to get there. So why don't you help me get there? And so just finding, even with the reroute, just help me get to that ultimate destination. Let's be creative. And this weekend I was actually at uh, Disneyland with my kids and one of my, we went on Splash Mountain and one of my children was completely soaked. And then after walking around for like an hour, he now is very uncomfortable walking in soaked uh, pants. And so we didn't want to walk back to our hotel or, or walk and shuttle and Uber back to our hotel. And so we, I decided, okay, I'm just going to go in this shop over in downtown Disney and I'm just going to buy him uh, a little pair of, of boxers and he'll be a bit more comfortable. And I walk in and I said, do you have any kids boxers? Nope. Nope. Sorry. Do you have any shorts? Nope. Nope. Sorry. And it's a clothing store and I see things around and I'm going, okay, well, could you help me kind of think this through? Right. And ultimately they ended up having men's boxers in extra small, which ended up being fine. They were like little shorts for him, but I had to like help him get to that process. And I was thinking to that, it's almost like a lack of accountability. There's no even opening open-mindedness. That's a, that's like a stop of creativity. And I really think that that happens so often in service that people aren't even willing to just open up the box and get to the results and helping people get to whatever problem that it is that they need to solve. And cre creativity allows us to do that. It allows us to achieve growth and find unlikely uh, perspectives or open ourselves to kind of this diversity. And at some point, I really do believe that kids, it becomes uncool to be creative or uncool to pretend and, and start noticing what other people think. And I saw that again, a little bit at Disneyland where the, one of my kids really wanted 
this hat from Jack Sparrow and then he's got it on and he's loving it and we're doing it and then the second we leave and we're not in that mode of just being a Disney it's like oh I don't want anybody else to see me in this hat it's like he's judging himself like some sort of social pressure and and our, our wild imaginations now become like taken down into this little box and they just or even just completely stop and so for those of you that are out there that have said I'm not creative well you're lame <laughs> Just think that that should just that should not be the case. It's time to change that and and really start to to embrace it in a different way. So what is it that you love, and how could we develop this outlet to allow new creative thoughts and feelings and perceptions come to be, and really to build on on life and love in a new creative way? Well, we have the perfect person to help us do that, and that is Jessica Hagee. She is a blogger, an author, a contributor, and to several different media outlets, uh, including Forbes and, and Fast Company. And, and she really is a gangster when it comes to this topic. Formerly, she's an artist and writer, but she's best known for Webby award-winning blog, This Is Indexed. But she's also uh, been described as deceptively simple, or her work has been undeniably brilliant. I am obsessed with it. And she's worth a Google. You'll go down this rabbit hole and find all this amazingness. I promise it's uh, it, it will definitely be worth uh, your time. She's the author of How to Be Interesting and the Art of War Visualized and Index, amongst others. And her books have been translated in more than a dozen languages. And her style of visual storytelling allows readers to draw their own conclusions and so they actively participate in the narrative and this quote I love is that her images don't always tell us what to think quite often they elegantly offer us ideas to think about and so let's join the uh, join me in welcoming Jessica Hagee hello hi Randy how are you I love the illustrations that you have behind you yes I have a five and a half year old and he draws a lot so if it's enough that he loves, he will put it on the wall. Oh, that's so cute. So he decides what goes on the wall. Yeah, because if we just put everything on the wall, we don't have enough walls. Yes, I was going to say that because my children, I think, would our walls would be entirely covered. Oh, they make so much stuff. They really and do. And whenever they catch it in the trash can, it's like bad news. You have to bury it. You have yeah. to. Yeah, you're right. Or even take it outside. It's so true. So tell us about you and your journey in, in leadership. So I started out as an advertising copywriter. I was writing for all sorts of random clients and learning how to sort of be a verbal chameleon of this is what you want to say and this is how you want to do it. And I got really sort of frustrated with the idea that I was always talking to clients of a certain style and the levels were working and I was like, I have to do something with my brain. This is just like rotting me from the inside. So I went and I got an MBA and I saw how a lot of business people translate sentences into graphs. So you take, um, if you ever did like in grade school, you diagram sentences and you see like, oh, this is the start and this is the end and this is how they fit. But in business speak, if you do the same thing with the same sentence in graph form, suddenly it becomes a PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. So I started putting those up in around like 2006. And that was when blogging was like, Boom. And it really took off. And since then, I've been using graphs and charts to tell jokes and stories and get at the heart of things and really do what a sentence diagram does, which is to take a complicated idea and boil it down to this, that, the other thing and break down really, really weird ideas into something really simple that people can glance at and understand. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's also complexity to some of the illustrations that you do as well. Um, and I was starting to share with you before the podcast, and I, so I, share, I, I paused to share with you now. But last night, my son was saying, well, who's going to be on the podcast? And I shared with you, uh, I shared your name, and, he, and I was telling him, you're an illustrator, and he loves to draw. And so I pulled up a couple of them. And one of them that I saw last night was the, the graph of the, the length of line of the bathroom in relation to the popularity of a jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I laughed out loud and then I showed it to him and he, and he like, it took him a second. He just kind of stares at it and he's like, I don't, I don't know exactly. And I just, I'm like, you know, like, cause you have to, and I'm trying to explain it and I just go, Hey, it's, it's adult humor. I, I, I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to explain it to you young child, but you know, he's like, I think I get it. I think I get it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, that was one that I, I put up there and people were like, wait, what? I was like, do you think about how many buttons it has? And like, 
poles and like the whole thing. Oh my gosh, but, I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's one of those, the, the graphs and charts are things that really sort of work as small sentences. And if you can take an idea and put it into one sentence, you will be more than halfway to getting your point across to anyone, even if they're not visual. Mm -hmm. If you can take any idea that you have and just sort of keep it simple and get it out and it'll work. And it was also really fun to talk to him, too, because it, is it called a Venn diagram when two circles cross over? Yeah. OK, so there was one that was a Venn diagram of places to go and things to see. And when it crosses over, it becomes an infinity. I think it's on the cover of one of your books. Oh, yeah. And he and I showed him that one and he goes, oh, like Disneyland, it's a place to go and there's things to do. And there's an infinity amount of things to, you know to be a part of. And I'm like, I bingo. Know. Back to Disney. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So it's like it it uh, it is an opportunity to expand someone's mind in such a visual and simple way. I love it. Thanks. And then how did you then? So how does creativity and how did you end up using this to tap or help people to tap into their own? So I just kept drawing, and the more I drew, the more I had to think about, and the more I had to get at and figure out things. Creativity really spurred curiosity. Like you have to be curious. And curiosity is not a skill or a craft or anything other than really like paying attention to information that sort of like sticks out or sticks to you. Mm -hmm. So creativity, I think, is more of a habit than any sort of innate way of being. Mm -hmm. So like if you love math, you can dig into all things mathematical. And that's as creative, if not more creative, than making a painting or writing a play. And creativity is really all about the digging and the like wanting to know. Mm -hmm. And so can people force themselves to be creative? I think there is one super simple way to do it. And you have kids, so you know this happens all the time. But toddlers, they ask why, why, mm -hmm. why, 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 four, five, six, seven times. And if we do that, when we're like, what is this? Why? Why is that? Why? And if you just keep going back to the why, mm -hmm. that's creativity. That is actually how to build understanding and finding new things. And really being an annoying toddler is the best way to like <laughs> jump right into being like a really super innovative, like insightful person. Yeah. And challenging things is, is really part of creativity. Creativity doesn't always mean crayons. No, it just means being, being open to the idea that what you're seeing is not all that's there and trying to like claw through that or fiddle your way through into what an idea is and tinkering and taking it apart and putting back together. Like that's, that's really all it is. It's just that, that innate curiosity that if you just keep going with it, will give you everything. So what does it bring? What does creativity bring to an organization? So I think when, leaders want to be creative or they want to tap into that sort of creativity if they just start listening if they start like listening to what people are asking or what the problems are or why this is coming up and you're like what is what is this keyword what is this what is this scab that we have that we have to like heal underneath like if you really pay attention to the things and people like regardless of title position you just start collecting these observations, especially unexpected weird ones. And even the ones that make you wince, those are really the foundation for building new stuff and figuring new things out. And the one thing I have to say, like if you're really trying to get creativity to work for your organization, you have to be open to the gritty bits, the pieces that don't quite fit with what you feel. And the love of just getting again, getting further than that and finding something else. If you give yourself permission to change your mind based on what you find out just by observing, mm. that's where leadership and creativity totally meet. And you just see like, oh, I heard this. I can do this to fix it. That is what leadership really is, or as far as I've been. And can is there a certain demographic or group that is more inclined to, to tackle something like that? I don't think creativity really has a demographic as much as it has a mindset, mm. which is just that it's not greedy, but it is sort of greedy for information. So anybody who's like, what is next all the time? Or why is this happening? Or why am I stuck here? Those are the people that are going to get you somewhere else other than the people who are like, 
I guess this is how it is, and I guess this is what it is. So I guess there's some aspect to creativity, too, that's a little bit of discomfort, where you have to be kind of not not okay with things as they are mm-hmm. in order to find things where they could be. Mm-hmm. And what do you say, I mean, I call people that say they aren't creative lame at the, at the beginning of it. What do you say to people if they say they aren't creative? No, everyone is. Everyone is creative if they are curious or frustrated in any possible way. I mean, like when you are absolutely frustrated, what is the first phrase that like pops into your brain? When I'm really frustrated, I'm probably curse, yeah. curse words. Yes. <laughs> what the heck or like what the, like you can swear as much as you want but like in your brain what the what and that is like the foundation for creativity it's like why what is this why 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 mm-hmm. and instead of being like why 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 like if you follow it down the trail of like i can figure this out this is not right but i can figure out why it's wrong and i can figure out a way to get around it the why 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 it doesn't have to be a lament if it's asked super honestly it's a way through and so that frustration is really the start of the way through everything else. Well, that's interesting. So people tend to ask questions in moments of frustration, don't they? Or, yeah, yeah even if they do include a, you know, a beautiful crest word or two. Yeah, I don't know if you bleep or not, but that is absolutely like you're just like, what? Ah! and that frustration manifests in sort of a question that ends with an exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark. And you're just like, ah, Mm -hmm. and that ah is the start of figuring out what to do next. And that really is kind of, it it becomes the urgency really in the change. Excellent way of putting it. Yes. That urgency that like comes from, I think maybe the more frustrated you are, the more you'll be propelled to find the answer to solve your own problem. Mm Mm-hmm. And the, the creativity then helps people through challenges in a sense. I think it's kind of the only way. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have some sort of urge to figure out or find somebody to help you or get something done, all, all you're faced with is just sort of this passivity and Mm -hmm. maybe creativity and passivity are opposites. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And that's what I was, I was uh, thinking about in the intro piece of it is I really do think creativity is is accountability or it's it's perseverance in a sense in the fact that there's so often people just give up on solving problems. They're like, yep, nope, I'm just not going to answer that question or I'm not going to help. Yeah, and I don't know what really spurs people to be like, I will find my way through this. But that that spur is really sort of the start of creative ideas, because I don't think anyone ever gets to something that's new and novel without being poked or prodded in some way first. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, I think that it takes a pretty special person to create change when there isn't a prod happening, right? Yeah, then then you just start posting and you're super comfy and all of a sudden you wake up and you're 80 years old and you're like, what did I do? Yeah. Yeah, no, time, time definitely flies. And it's like that who moved my cheese concept with Spencer Johnson of, of you just yeah. hem and haw long enough that the cheese station is empty. Cheese goes bad fast, man. I mean, mold, it's green. Mm-hmm. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, 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 I think that the prod, the good news is, is that there's prods uh, every day, right? And there's things that happen every single day. Yeah. If you're paying close enough attention to pretty much anything, you can either get annoyed all the time or sort of like comfortable all the time. And I think the people who are the happiest notice all of those things at once and just choose a few to go after in either direction. So does your brain then in you and your ability to kind of take complex ideas and and put them in a way that people can absorb and understand, do you think big picture naturally? I kind of do a little bit. The fun thing about drawing graphs with words is that you can expand or contract the idea based on how big of a vocabulary word you have. So if you just say, I mean, this is, I am a very nerdy verbal person, but if you have just things, well, that's a large idea. But if you have annoyances or if you have loves, then then you drill down a little bit further. And it's all about the words you use to frame your life. Mm-hmm. And I really have to be careful to find the right words to convey the messages that I want to Mm -hmm. and realizing that that is a function of not only making art, but of making what your life is in your own head Mm -hmm. is something that's really, really powerful to me and sort of telling your own story based on what the words are. 
becomes like a daily sort of like, I have to curate exactly the right vocabulary to get these ideas across. And does something typically happen in your life that then causes you to say, I want to illustrate this? I keep notes all the time and I keep notes of interesting words or images or ideas, or that is a great sentence. How can I make that beautifully visual? Mm -hmm. And so I just keep kind of taking that on a running basis. And then I'll look at my notes overall and see what sticks out again to me. So it's almost like building a pyramid of content where you can just walk around and observe. And then whatever is like observable and noteworthy is one level. And then the final level is sort of observable, noteworthy, and something I want to draw. And then once I start drawing things, okay, I've got a set. And then what is it I really want to like post or share? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a, a sifting and an editorial aspect to how I get ideas and keep them on track. Oh, that's so cool. So I have a couple of ones that I had pulled that just things that stuck out to me. And maybe, uh, Scott, if it's easy to throw a couple of these up here, up, up. The uh, insomnia, do you see that one or, or one that you have? So it's the spectrum of, and you'll, you'll know because you'll do drawings, but then spectrum of insomnia to trust in those that you work with. It's a spectrum oh, yeah. between, and I, that one really hit home with me because one, I have a bit of that from time to time. And two, I, it is so so related to the trust in the workplace from time to time, like your mind spinning of what's this person doing to work against me and, and that type of thing. Yeah. And so many, there are so many I, different people and there's this idea of, uh, I can't remember. I think it's somnarity or somnolence where all of a sudden you realize that everyone else in the world is living a life as complex and detailed and motivated and difficult and beautiful as your own. Mm -hmm. And that idea of I'm sitting in traffic and there are a thousand other people around me sitting in traffic who are all living these beautiful, rich, complex lives. Oh my God. Just mm -hmm. that there's so much going on beside behind every smile and inside of every car and all of that. There's so much behind everybody uh, and complexity. Right. And really thinking of like, you know what, you have to give everybody a little credit for being as complex as you are. And if you don't get them on the first like 10 seconds, they've been living like years of life too. And you have to give them credit for that. You're right. You're right. And uh, I imagine that sometimes people interpret your <laughs> illustrations in, into their own perspective as well. And that's kind of probably pretty beautiful. It, you know, yeah. it's One of the really awesome things about tearing down an idea to two or three words is that it becomes sort of a Rorschach test for everyone who sees it. So mm -hmm. if I say yes, no, maybe, everyone's yes, no, and maybe are different letters. Mm -hmm. And everyone puts in, every word almost becomes a pronoun for whatever is impacting someone else's life. And I think that's really how like literature and comics and anything that puts the reader right in that place does is it makes them see an idea through their own lens. Absolutely. It's not about me. It's all about what they see in it. Totally. I love it. And one of the other ones that I wanted to share is the strengths and weaknesses uh, and attention paid and the friends and foes, how we as, and cause it's one thing that I, we push here on the hot box quite a bit of how much energy we as leaders will spend on people that are your problem children as much as you, and sometimes even less, you'll spend less time on the, the rock stars than you do on the, the people that are problems. And it's, it can be exhausting, you know, cause they, or, or the rock stars will, um, or your foes will spend more time on your strengths or your, your weaknesses, et cetera. So just basically the, the amount of time that they spend looking at your bad side is equal to the people that you love. They spend looking at your good side. Oh, totally. And if, if you have a friend and you mess up three times, they will gloss over that. They'll be like, we can solve this. This is fine. Mm -hmm. If you have someone who is just trying to undermine you constantly and you make those three small mistakes, all of a sudden it's the end of your career. And I think so many human interactions are absolutely perceptive. And if we can all work on, from the more positive aspect, which is everybody has a lot going for them, mm -hmm. work with that instead of the, the missteps and the flubs and the silly stuff, we would get so much more done. Mm -hmm. 
The final one that was shown, the illustration I put up here, is the the saints and sinners, and the the difference between saints and sinners, or the the the, the piece in between, is public relations. I that's another laugh out loud one. When I saw that one, I'm like, yes, a good PR team can take care of that, can't they? Um, and you'd never even know the difference. Right. So like if you're a public relations firm and you want to slam your logo on the bottom of that card, let me know, because it's pretty much all all we all do now in this, especially in like 2019, where everything is everyone is a brand and everyone has some sort of personality that they're trying to push. And like, what is the difference between obnoxious and hilarious or absolutely insightful and completely annoying? And it's Mm -hmm. all about It's all about PR and who's going to vouch for you and how you spin, how you spin what you've got. Yeah, no doubt about it. So will you help us index a little bit here on the the hot box? Let's do it. So we had chatted a little bit prior in uh, a couple different ideas. And which one do you think is the best place? where, Where should we start? I totally want to go with your with your tagline. Okay, so the learn, love and kick ass. So this is something that that we live in every every uh, episode that we have and everything that we do out and about, we learn, we love, and, and we kick ass. And one thing I was sharing with Jessica, for those that are listening, is that I believe that it, through the learning and loving, um, it's really setting the stage for, for someone to kick ass. And that's kind of an exponential you know, growth that could happen from that. But really, it's the execution that counts. So you totally just described in a sentence, as I was saying, like you can take some ideas and you put them together. And you end up with that. And the, I think this is kind of what you are after Yay. with all of your work, which is the more you learn, the more you love, the more you love, the more you learn. And the more you do that, the more ass you kick. And more ass you kick. And so for anybody that can't see it, I highly urge you to check it out on social media. We'll post it out on our different uh, places as well um, for those that are just listening to the podcast. I will scan it for you and make it all nice and clean. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Yes. So it's a, a continuum of learning and loving. And the, I love that you said that more love that you, you end up learning, the more learning you, you love. And then both of those things kind of pull together to, to, to ass kicking. Totally. Yeah. Yay. That's such a cool way to look at it. I have chills that is happening here. Yes. Thank you. It's fun to, to pull it about the, so the other one that I said, and this is maybe a little too much information for, for that I shared is that I will con- commonly uh, listen to gangster rap music when I need to pick me up. And when I'm driving in the car on the way to different events, or just when I am a little down and insecure, I'll be, I'll put on some, you know, some good music and just get a, my gangster on. And there's amazing the ability of this, you know, chick in a car to be like, yo, 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 <laughs> to like pop out. Like suddenly I have all the swagger in all the world. And so I just wondered if there was some, you know, amazing way that you could uh interpret that i am i'm getting to that one <laughs> does i mean hopefully somebody listening or watching can relate to the to that right does anybody else relate to um getting you know putting on some gangster rap music and handling it it's uh it's certainly an, an effort that uh even my colleagues back in the day and i would do is to just get the hype going and that there's nothing better than the swagger of those that are rapping. They have this just endless amount of, uh, of overconfidence in the words that they use, in the language that they use, and, um, and just their ability to portray that language. Oh. And hopefully you can hear, those that are listening, you can hear a little uh, the mood setting that we're doing for uh, Jessica's illustration. Okay, so I went a little meta on this. Okay, ooh, I like it. So, okay, so I've got emotional music and physical power as a function. Ooh. And it's why we have marching bands and headphones during workouts. And I know like in, in older times, even Ooh. going into battle, we had freaking bands, Ooh. which was to just get people psyched up and like fight and get like I murder. love that. Wow. That's Can I open a- up a little? Is that? There we go. Perfect. Ooh. There we go. Um, physical power and emotional music and the relationship between those. And you're right. Even back in the day with war, with marching bands. So the marching, so rap music to me is like marching bands into war. Right? Like everybody needs that. Everybody needs that gist of like, I'm going to get this done. There was, gosh, I, there was, have you seen the, um, the Deadwood trailer? Do you watch Deadwood? Mm-mm. Okay, so they just put the trailer out, and there's just this, like, deep, angry, like, Johnny Cash bass mm-hmm. under it. 
And I was kind of like, okay, like I watched that show. I kind of remember it. I heard that song and I was like, oh yes. Like I am, <laughs> I am back in front, like frontier times. And I will just like fight these people. And it was so powerful. Like when you get the right song in the right mood, it does so much. It's music. It's on. I love it. So can you share a bold action item or takeaway for everyone? Okay. So me being bold is really sort of out learning that I'm not even there because the work is not, is not about me. And it's always about my audience. Like always, even when I was in advertising, it's about my clients. It's about my audiences. It's about who I'm trying to talk to. And that really was kind of weirdly empowering because if you re feel really small, it's not about you. It's about the message. It's about what you're going to offer. It's about how you're going to make the person you're talking to feel heard and cared for. And all of a sudden, every promotion is not about you. It's about the reader. Mm -hmm. And it's about taking yourself out of the equation and just saying, like, I have something to va of value for you. And I am not I'm not asking you for anything. I'm just giving you this gift. And all of a sudden, that mindset makes any sort of pitch just a thousand times easier because mm -hmm. one, it's not about you. And two, it's giving something instead of asking for something. Mm -hmm. And really, that is kind of how I approach all of my writing, which is who am I talking to and what can I give them? And that makes pitching it not at all stressful. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing. How can people get a hold of you? So my blog is thisisindexed.com. I am also a super huge Twitter and email person. I'm on Twitter at Jessica Hagee. And my email is jf is in Frank, Hagee, H-A-G-Y at Gmail. And honestly, one of the most fun things of being an internet person is having pen pals who actually take the time to figure out what my email is and email me. And I've had some pen pals for going on like 13 years. So oh, neat. hit me up. I will reply. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us and learning and loving and kicking ass. And we just really appreciate it. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. Talk to you soon. Let's head out to our shout out. Hey, Brownie, it's Alex Black with the Mega Dumb Monster Truck. Wish you were here. You're missing it. We might bring home a win. If not, as long as everybody's happy. Hey, I'm Justin Seitz, other driver of Megalodon. Wish you were here. And welcome. Thank you to Megalodon for being here and to giving us a shout out. And thank you to Jessica Hagee for being part of the show today and being our guest. Woo! It was such a cool show. And I'd love to see the illustrations and how she captured the learn, the love, and the kick ass. And thank you again to our monster trucks, Monster Jam, Megalodon, kicking some butt. And and the I love just getting the shout outs out in the the people that are out kicking ass in the things that they do and sharing some of that love with us. All right, it is time. It is our top five kick ass for today. Number one is to relax. I feel like uh, I love the way that Jessica framed it in that it's not about you, it's about the client, it's about the people that you're serving. And really just like I was saying with, the, with my kids and creativity, that just relax, let it go, that just chill out, that creativity can come, doesn't have to come from a place of stress. Number two, be accountable. That problem solving is about being accountable, being persevering to the end. Create, be creative to the end. Number three is expressing yourself, whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to be a crayon box. It doesn't have to be picking up a pen and paper. It could just be being frustrated and hitting that point of prod and knowing that it's time to be innovative, be creative. Number four is discover, be curious, ask why, and then share with other people. Creativity can build and grow through synergy. And then it always comes down to these two things, learning and loving and the inner relationship between the two. Can't wait to bring that illustration together and to share it again with all of you. That's your top five kick ass. Thank you again to Jessica Hagee for being here. Thank you to Megalodon and the Monster Trucks for giving us a shout out. Until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass. Mm -hmm.